Right. Hello and welcome straight to Bell Gamers, the GBHL YouTube channel. You're here with your host, GBHL Jamie, though you can't see me. And GBHL Damien, though you can't see me. Yeah, this is this is weird. This is more of an audio file, and I'll probably have to find a picture of something to put up in front. A picture of us up. Yeah, just us do on the on your sofa because that's probably yeah. what, the only time we've been together <laughs> on a video. Of them and then do it like a um, animation, and people think it's really happened. Yeah, well, they never know from the the um, the the thumbnail, would they? No, exactly, exactly. We've <laughs> hooked them in. All right, uh, we'll kick off. It, first question is from Acthon Thirty Nine. He says, "Number one, I'm not so hot on my high elvish law, but I was wondering why Gildor is in the high elf list and therefore only able to lead high elves." When his option can improve wood elves. Do you know? Everything <laughs> silence. Are you pointing out that we're not in the same room. Are they, are they, are yeah, we're... we should point this out. I, I, I'm in Manchester. Damien is down south in Twickenham. Right. So speak for any question first. Yeah. Um, um, I. Why? Because he he's a high elf, isn't he? Gildor. He, yeah. Well, he's. He, they, in the books, they bump into him. Um, he just left Elrond, didn't he? Yeah. And he sends word back to Elrond from them. So I think he's a high elf, which is why he's in that bit. Yeah. I guess the um, the upgrading wood elves is sort of just the almost aesthetic that is given in the books at the time, that they're just travelling elves. Yeah, well, exactly. I think he, he's meant to be, um, they're meant to be, they're not meant to be the armoured high elves from the kind of Last Alliance time. Mm. They're meant to be the... Um, it's been a, it brings something different to the list, doesn't it? Like his kind of woodland elves that they bump into. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's why. Why well, he's, he's in that list. And I think he's originally, like... He was, he was, he was originally um, in Legions of Middle-earth, Wanderers in the Wild. You never oh. saw him very much because he couldn't lead troops. And oh. he was in the hero list. I think, as memory serves, I'm not sure on this. I'm sure some better nerd will point me, points out to me. I think in the original writings, he was a, he was really important. He was like a cousin of Galadriel, I think, or Elrond or oh. someone. But then that that gets retconned out, so he's not anymore. He yeah, basically right. got, he got disowned by Tolkien. Oh, poor guy. Something like that. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, number two, have you seen the um, <laughs> Dragon <laughs> Morgoth bat rip? Yeah, well, I'm not gonna lie. The way you, the way you um, also, had, uh, hyped it up. I thought he was then going to go on a slay Morgoth. Well, he survived a couple of rounds. I was a bit disappointed when he didn't kill him. I know, me too. We, we, I think we <laughs> both really wanted it to happen. <laughs> right, so, 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 at least you know who he is. Uh, number two, still thinking about the epic Dragon Slayer Iron Guard. Very cool. What would you say is the most heroic act you've ever encountered in a game besides that one? Not yours. Yeah, my, my, my standard oh, staple yeah. answer, Thranduil. <laughs> yeah. Knocking over three fell beasts to essentially win a tournament. 99% of the questions on speed training question are answered with that. Yeah, it's true. Damien's had a sip of wine there, everyone. I, I can see him, but he can't see me. <laughs> I mean, wine and a t-shirt, would you believe it? Yeah, no, I'm right. drinking him wine, I'm drinking wine. <laughs> no, it's just... Yeah. In a pot of wine and a t-shirt. Yeah. A barrel of wine, just for a bit. Uh, is that yours then? Is that the most heroic thing? Oh you've yeah, done? definitely. Yeah. yeah. I think. Uh, I mean, mine would probably be at the Throne Skulls when I was playing Tom Robinson, and Thorin was fighting Bolg for loads of rounds, and Bilbo ran in into combat with him and killed Bolg in combat to save Thorin. Like. Oh yeah, that, that's incredible. Oh, that one. I've heard that, that one. That was wicked. There's tons from um, from the Seven Stones. We read out a few that we did the most heroic act thing. Yeah, them. I think uh, Gladriel. I think the, there's one where Boromir killed Keeley in one turn, and then the next turn, Tariel ran into combat with Boromir and killed, killed him. Them. Yeah. So stuff like that. We talked about maybe reading them out as a little video. I think, it'll, I think it'd be good, cool to, to hear. Yeah, what was yours? The one that I submitted. No, I'm, I'm talking to them. See, this is oh. what makes it tricky when we can't see each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just shout, shout right back at me. What was yours? I answered already. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, comment below in your next post what was your most heroic act. Yeah. So number three from Act 39 says, Gimli or Barlin with Durin's axe as your leader in the Durin's folk list. One or the other. Is Gimli worth the extra five points? Do you want to like count to three and say our answer? Yeah, sure. Gimli, One, Gimli or Barlin, yeah? Yeah. One, two, two three. Barlin. Gimli. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So, what, so, okay, we've got both sides of the argument. Why do you think Gimli? I think Gimli because 
He's got one extra fate, so he's a bit more survivable. Mm. And even though uh, Bar is essentially three attacks because the because the axe, he's only got two attacks for really? killing output. So I think Gimli does more damage over the course because that they're the main differences, aren't they? Uh, yeah, but that, that and uh, Barling gets the extra point of will. Oh yeah, yeah, well done. See, I, I'd, I'd rather have an extra attack to wound than a point of will. See, I I like Balin with Duran's axe because yes, he's got he's always got three attacks with the banner essentially, and then that plus one to wound at most levels doesn't make too much of a difference. When you fight something really squishy, like Defence 4, he needs 3s and can reliably kill it. Yeah. And when it gets higher, like Defence 7, he needs 5s, whereas Gimli needs 6s. Yeah, I suppose. I've always found him, whenever I see Barlin in an army list, I always see him as a bit target. I killed, mm. I killed him at, um, at the... Yeah, uh, it's because it's you need those. I killed him with a Berserker in one turn. Yeah, it's because it's you need 3 6s and he's gone. Yeah, or 2 can kill him. Yes, yeah. So I, I think he's a bit, a bit squishy for a dwarf. If if you squishy for a dwarf, if you um if you switch it out and say Gimli with an elven cloak, because he can he can take that, then by all means yes, Gimli is the general. Yeah, because the way you the way I often take down Barlin as well is just you know a couple of crossbows th- through and in the way, just a bit of a like I mean, cheeky you, shot you, one you, six. You you get that, that one wound on him, and then suddenly you know he's got like his fate point, or does he take the wound and maybe fluff his next? Yeah. That's interesting, though. Other sides of the... I love it. Well done. Yeah. Good job. Uh, do you want to get the next one? Yep. So, next up, we have Wob Chicker. Um, he says, I've been out of the loop for a while. Sorry for that. Yeah, I noticed he's not been on the plant here. Uh, no, he hasn't. You're all right. Yeah, where have you been? Um, and my question this week is about fun and tournaments. Oh, oh God, the I'm two can't exist together. Completely mutual <laughs> Uh, how much is your enjoyment of a game slash tournament dependent on how well you do? Do you enjoy taking a filthy list of tournaments? Woes Elves, for example. Totally Phil. Yeah. I think Jamie min- mentioned not enjoying using his goblins as much before. It's a good question. Yeah, I, I think it, it depends. I, th- I think you, you set yourself into a mindset before you go to a tournament of how you want to do at this one. Yeah. So like when we took Double Dragon to your tournament... We know it was so it, it, it was powerful. Yes. You thought you were going to win. No, we didn't. You did. We <laughs> didn't. We back genuinely twice, didn't. The Bombadil thing back twice. Yeah, the, the Bombadil one as well. Like that, we didn't think that'd do very well because the scenarios weren't tailored for it in any <laughs> sense. But we went for fun. Whereas if I took my woes elves, yeah, and I found this a lot last year, which is why I'm trying not to be as competitive this year. Yeah. Was it? Let's say I go, and I lost the first game. I think, oh, that's it, weekend's over. I can't yeah. win this anymore. Uh, I don't care about the rest of my games, and I'd, I'd rather now go home. Yeah. So, if you're going to compete, I think the smallest upset can really ruin your weekend, because yeah. that's what you've gone for. Whereas if you take something a bit more fun, or you know, just trying something out, then you'll enjoy your weekend much more. I think the very first tournament of the year, what was it? Uh, it was Tangs, yeah. wasn't it? Was it Titans? Yeah, Titans yeah. are low points. I, I took the All Infantry Rohan, and I was like, if I win two games, I'll, this is a success. Yeah. Which I managed to do. Yeah. I, um, I completely agree, because I, I was in a very similar situation to you last year, that whenever I was, towards the end of the year, when I was genuinely not trying to win the league, there were a couple of tournaments I went through where I lost the first game, and at that point, the only way I could do better in the league was by coming first in the tournament. Yes. So suddenly, it was like, well, even if I do well at this tournament now, it's irrelevant. Yeah. So yeah. I might as well have bought fluff. Hmm. And that that's kind of annoying. And that's why that certainly the first half of this year, I was trying out stuff. And I, I know at the the one where I started bringing Terrio, I had so much fun this year where you, you then didn't have any kind of... It didn't matter what happened, and you're absolutely right. If you if you go with a army that you're not trying to win the event with, it it means more when you win. Yeah. And if you lose, it doesn't really matter. Whereas if you go to, and your out your desire is to try and win the tournament, if you lose, it can dampen your, your enthusiasm a bit. But I do think the league adds the extra bit. I think that's the added bit that it's not just about because if you lose a game, you might still come first or second in the tournament, which is a really good result. 
players if you have to get when you know towards the end it was for me where I had to come first and to help yeah that took a bit of the fun out of it yeah I agree there because I think it's the same same for me like because uh, you and Ed last year were so you were that that sort of far above me I needed to get the win mm. to, to catch that gap almost you have to get the hundred you? Yeah, yeah you have like it's like you have to win and if you lose that one game then you know there's a good chance you're probably not going to win the tournament with a loss so yeah. you'd be like, well, might have brought a cup of dragons. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so it's, um, but that that I think it is the league thing to to go to Robchick's point. I think it, it it's own that only matters when it's the league. So like, I still think you can um you can go to win and have an amazing time. Oh, at, definitely. And and not win. It's just that it, the the league towards the end of the year puts added pressure on a couple of people at the top. Yeah. I think. But nine times out of ten, if I if I go over a competitive list and I don't win, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. Right. It's um that's not where we're going when we go to CJ Crowley. Except Crowley. for America. We have to win America. Oh yeah, I've been catching up on some DCHL videos today. They're they're giving quite a lot of snack talk, you know. Really? Yeah, they're they're giving quite in light in the dark. They're giving oh, let, let them. Of, oh yeah, we're gonna take them down. We'll just do it on the day. Yeah? Yeah. Well just you know. Wozels, Ferrells, Tom, bring in whatever. He'd just do well irregardless, annoyingly. Yeah. And then, you know, James can just skirt around the board edge for two hours. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we'll win so, that way. We'll win that way. We're, we're going to America. You know, you, they've, they've shut down the challenge now. It's not It's not us. They're saying they're going to win, so, you know, we're, we're rising to it. It'd be a bit embarrassing if they lost their own tournament. Yeah. You imagine this, <laughs> we've paid for these guys to come across well paid part paid for these guys to come across and they beat us yeah they're ringing Canada as well they're, they're trying to get people in from Canada they, they seem a bit desperate you know so, <laughs> <laughs> to get as many people in as possible yeah. but it does look really cool I was like have you seen the Star of Power oh yes the first, is that first prize no it's for um, I think it's the person who does the best across three events oh um, man find a <laughs> to sign up for another time yeah no <laughs> There's a, there's a couple of really interesting ones, isn't there? There's a, uh, isn't there one like, essentially, like, it's like the Slugs of Mountain Dew, and you choose two heroes and. There's like apparently there's one where you've got like 700 points of heroes, and you have to kill. It's like they they keep chucking stuff at you. Yes. And you have to yeah. Kill most, like out of other people, 700 points of heroes. Yeah. Which I was thinking of because you wouldn't because it, um, all, all everything's based around a travel case. And I'm thinking, oh, I could get 700 points of heroes in it as, as well as my army. Yes, yeah, you could easily but, do that. Uh, there's a there's a doubles as well. Um, there's quite a few events going on, so yeah. You, you're not really easy to transport doubles at 700 points. You what? You're not really easy to transport for 700 points. Yeah, that's good. Doubles. A double dragon. Yeah, <laughs> two dragons. <laughs> Smash, it. Smash it! Smash <laughs> it! I'll pack James into a suitcase, brawn, <laughs> and he can uh, give you my partner. <laughs> yeah, it'll be small. It'll be easier to carry a dragon than it would be to carry him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. That's like that was a good question, Mob Chica. It was. Next up, we've got oh god, uh, Arju Ryan. He says, "Hey guys, recently subscribed and really enjoyed the content so much so that it's convinced me to pick up some metal Urukai scouts on eBay." It's not the Isengard army I've always wanted. My question is, which book do I need to play them with? And does the main Lord of the Rings rulebook have all the stat lines I need to play? Would appreciate it if someone replies here as I'm looking to pick up the rules as soon as possible. And Yamsider has replied with a couple of bits of bobs there as well. Yeah. He said, the uh, the Hobbit rulebook will give you the rules to play the game, but there are no Isengard profiles. So you can find them in the Fallen Realms source book, which, is it out of production, that one? Fallen Realms? Or is that one of the ones that's still there? Available, wasn't it? I think it was still available. I think it's Free People's Kingdoms of Men. Mordor's still available, wasn't it? Yeah, Mordor's definitely there. Um... Actually, maybe for the realms that's kind of Moria, Moria and Angmar and Mordor are still available. Maybe. Uh, books. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's gone. Oh, it's gone. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, um, Kingdoms of Men in Polish. Oh, yeah? You want that? Yeah. Uh, no, it's gone. Oh, it's the, oh dear. Uh, and Morinama. Well, Yemsel, it does recommend the, the place that I would have gone to if you 
wanted to find your stats. And that's a Lonely uh, Knights Army Builder. Uh, you can download it for Excel, and it has all the profiles, all the points, and you can build your armies on there. The other thing it doesn't give you is special rules mm. and what they do. Just, you, you need to get a hold of them. If you if you if you talk about starting the game, you need you need the book. You want the book. Yeah. So, um, get get onto eBay. Get onto the trade group. Loads of people have got them. Yeah. You might you might be able to get a hold of a copy about two off. But yeah, it's the Fallen Realms book that you'll need. And well done for starting. The Holy Quest of Isengard. Yeah, with metal scouts as well. Yeah, they're gorgeous, gorgeous models. Yeah. I've got 18 of them sitting in a box somewhere, but I've painted like 24 of the plastic ones. And like... Do you <laughs> think you need all those other ones? <laughs> <laughs> but they're very low down the painting priorities. Yeah. But um, yeah, good luck to you. And um, let us know how you go. Yeah. Uh, so, next up... Oh, it's an army. I have... <laughs> yes. It's an army that I would answer happily. But I'm not going to, because it's yeah, your question. Pass over to you. Elias Kint, or Kint, probably. Probably Kint. Hello, Jamie, and hopefully someone else. Hello. I was wondering what you think my 600-point Wood Elves and Merkwood list, mm-hmm. which is Legolas with armour and Elven cloak. That's, that's all right, isn't it? That's a, that's a st- good 100 points spent. Well, 105 points, sorry. Spent. Well done. Spoilers. 10 Wood Elves with 10 bows and 9... Oh, they've all got bows and 9 of them got spears. Good. Then Rumil... With yes. six Guard of the Glass and Court. Then six Wood Elves, uh, four with Spears and two with Elm Blades. Mm-hmm. Then Thranduil with Armour and Bow. Four Merkwood Rangers. So, oh, I spot a problem. Yeah, this is a Thranduil's Halls list now. Yeah, so. A... Six Merkwood Elves with Elm Blades. That, that's. Uh, uh, he says, thank you and keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Uh, that's legal. Yeah, that's an illegal list, unfortunately, there. The uh, Legolas with 10 Wood Elves with 10 Bows comes from, well, we assume it because they've got spears, so they have to come from uh, Lothlorien and Mirkwood, and they don't get the bow special rule. Yeah. So currently that warband can only take, uh, they can take 8 maximum. Yeah, because he's got 12 in the other ones, so he's got 22, so yeah, 8. Yeah. And you have 8 bows, because your, your bow limit works out per faction. Not for the army. Yeah. So you could take you could take Thrand and I've been using a lot of Thranduil's halls recently. I've got to say I don't really rate the Merkwood Elves. I don't. They're somewhere in the middle between the Rangers and the Palace Guards. So you could take yes, they're the, ch- the cheaper troop option. Yeah, the yeah, new yeah. one. Yeah, you could take Thranduil with ten Rangers. Yeah, because they're hundred percent. You could do that. And but the the Legolas and Rumors warbands need to have a thirty three percent bowler. Yeah, that's correct. So, but you don't need to drop. We don't need to drop two, wouldn't you? Yeah, two. Two elves with bow from there, or just two bows from there. Yeah. So that's four points. And then maybe you can, I, I'm not sure on the points value of the Merkwood elves, but you could boost one of them up to be a ranger maybe. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. But yeah, if you did that, you've then got uh, eight, well, even with that current list, you've got 12, 13 shots plus Legolas. Yeah. Pretty good. That's good. Yeah. It looks like a decent list. I think it's a little too heavy on God of Gladium Court for my Vikings. Um, but you've got the three heroes that with the fight six, so you don't necessarily need the so much fight six. Yeah. But yeah, um, you make yeah drop a couple of bows, and then I'd, I'd probably I'd probably replace the Merkwood elves with rangers. Yeah, I mean if, if you drop those guys of the court to be regular warriors, and then upgraded your Merkwood elves into Merkwood rangers, yeah. you're going to boost your bows, and you're going to keep sort of a decent fighting line. If they became spearmen. See. The glaives are handy because they allow you to shield, but I just found the defense four is so weak. Like, so yeah, weak. Well, on on the whole, like the defense three, defense four makes so, so little difference. Yeah, like, exactly. I, I, I I lost fights a dead elf, irregardless. Yeah, in my eyes, anyway. All right, next question then. Mm-hmm. And we'll move on to Joe White. He says, "Hi guys, I was thinking of getting Bill the Pony for my Hobbit list because they treat him as a banner." However, this would mean I have to use old Bilbo to lead a warband because you have to take time to say yeah. you have to take Sam to take Bill. Would you say it's worth it? And then Jeremy Smith has said, "Where does it state that Sam must be taken?" And Joe says, "Not sure. I've lent my three people's book to a friend. It might be at the front with the rules of fellowship." Up. Now, in my head, I, that does sound right that you need to take Sam to take Bill. You do. It's that... in. It's in the. It's in the bit about the. Um, Rules. Yeah. 
You know the bit where it says things about Smeagol? It's not. Yeah, it's, Smeagol can only be taken if Frodo's been taken. And... It says if you've got, a, it's something like if you've got a Fellowship Warband with Sam, then you can take Bill. So you do need Sam. Yeah, that's true. But why? Why do you need old Bilbo? And I don't think he can't play the Warband, can he? Uh, I think he's actually still in that list. Is he? Is he in the Shire? Yeah. So the that, that's where he was originally placed, I believe. Um, and he's also in Wanderers of the Wild because it represents him at his time in Rivendell. And then Vanderbrus got FAQ. No, he's not. He's not. You can oh, see okay. he's not <laughs> that was incredible. <laughs> that was to me like you read my mind. Yeah. So I was just shaking my head. Um, no, he's not. He's not in the Shire list. Oh dear. He's just in Wanderers of the Wild. So <clears throat> you'd have well, you'd have Frodo, Paladin, Merry, Pippin. And Banderbrist to lead war bands. Yeah. And so, if you're taking Frodo, you might as well not take the Bill. Is he saying he has to take old Bilbo because of the point value, so he needs another war band? Is that the. Uh, possibly. But no, because he's saying he'd have to use old Bilbo to lead a war band. So it depends on your points. Yeah, I suppose, I suppose if you need that, uh, what is it, fourth war band, I guess? Mary you... Pippin, Paladin, Frodo. Fifth. It's a sixth, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because you can't have Sam, can you? So no. it's the three, the three named ones plus Banderas. No, oh, Paladin can Paladin lead. Paladin can lead, yeah. Yeah, so you're you only need to, you're only talking about if you got to a sixth warband, which obviously you can do it for this, but yeah. no, you can't do it anyway because Old Bilbo can't lead. No, well, so I, I think if if you've gone that far, you've 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 got Frodo leading a warband, and he is a big banner anyway. I think he's six inch banner for them, isn't he? Yeah, so he's he's a, he's a bigger banner than normal. So yeah, it's, although he's completely useless in game, besides this banner rule. Bill's there for um. But you you want Sam in the Hobbit list? Cause he actually gives you someone who's strength three and a bit of a fighter, as far as Hobbits go. He's just a banner. It's not six inches. Not six inches. Oh, okay. No, that he cannot be picked up and wielded by another model. It's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Frodo dies. Just hoist his hoist his body up. He's still alive. Oh, not a banner. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, all sorts of crazy things in that post, Joe. But um, leave Bill at home. Bill's there to help you hobbits if you have a fellowship woman. Yeah. Um, so yeah, take Frodo, and you can't use Bill. Get him on his own, obviously, as an independent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so next up, it's me, and I'm going to ask Mr. Jamie Gibbons this question. Okay. My question this week is: How do you think the most is the most effective way to use the Woes' blowpipes? Thanks, and keep up the good work. Back with you, sir. Well, it's a pipes. I've, 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 I still don't think I've got them down to a knack. I think because I use such a small number of them. Like I used to have a friend who would sort of use well, seventy Boses and Garn and Saruman the White. Yeah. Back back in the old ages, yeah. left. And what he would do is he would set up essentially fire teams. So say so you had twenty positions six inches away from another warband. If a uh, you know, the opposing force ran towards one half of the Woeses, they could retreat, and the other half would get to shoot, because it's a move or shoot weapon. But essentially they're just short-range crossbows, so you run up as far as you can, and then hopefully overwhelm them with shooting that they have to come to you, and then you get the, the blowpipes for a turn or two. On the whole, they're quite tough to use being 12-inch range and move or shoot. So what, what's your, why do you take the Woeses and Woeses? What do you think the spear support? Uh, no, they, they tend to go on the, actually, they go on the front line because they're so cheap and Garn's so cheap. I use them at 500 points because with elves you get two full warbands and then some hero normally. Oh, uh, you then got like 100 points or something. You got like 100 points. You get a hero and a couple of guys. Whereas if you take Garn, you can get Garn and eight. So they boost your numbers up and they bring blowpipes, which is a bit of ranged weapon. They have spears so they can support. But more importantly, they, they tend to sit in front of my archers and be, be an in the way for them. Oh, yeah. um, you, you don't actually use them for, of all their uses the blowpipes is pretty low down on your priority yeah they're just sort of there to be extra bodies really because when they're on the front line they're fight five with spear sports behind they are just elves to me and they're obviously woodland creatures so they fit with the how the army plays yeah. but um, the times I sort of use them effectively with the elves are if you're fighting against sort of a Moran and Orc Orc Spearman line or something like that they shoot the defence six, tougher stuff, because yeah. it's the same to wound as strength three. Then the elves shoot the weaker stuff that's exposed. Sure. Yeah. Hmm. 
I don't have a clue. I think they are quite tough to use. If you get into a wood, it becomes a bit easier because you can just like run back one turn and they won't catch you, so you can blow pipe them and then run away again. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Solid answer from the uh, managed one tournament. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Andrew C. who says, "Hey guys, long time viewer, but first time questioner. Oh my oh. god, I get to say the thing. Yeah, Jack, you do. What does he have to do? Oh, when you... oh, just... <laughs> I thought I got to say that. Okay." What? Andrew C, you are now in the loop. If we answer your question, which you're about to, you have to ask us a question next week. And, and every week thereafter. Yeah, pretty much, until one of us drops dead. Yeah. Four of us, probably. Yeah. Um, and he says, I just, so enjoy that. He says, I just snagged a bunch of Kazagard and a few missing axe heads. Have any potential repair ideas? Thanks. I have that. I've got some of the metal ones. And yeah, the metal ones are notorious for... It's usually uh, the guy who's got his his axe up in the air. Yeah, it, it depends if you if you've got the axe head or not, obviously. But if you, I know, um, actually, David Whitaker has recently converted groom hammers into cazards, and I think he used the um, I think he used plastic dwarfs warriors. Yeah, the axe heads were there, so you could put them on. But in terms of fixing them, I mean, you could pin it if you get a little modern pin it's box. It's a tiny, tiny. I think you could. Head, you'd, you'd, you'd find it really tough to pin into the shaft. Um, but if you are tempted to do that, you just drill into it and then put something like a paper clip in the middle. Yeah. And um, and then or a or a pin like a um, dressmaking pin. That'll be thinner than a paper clip. Slide that in, then drill into the axe head and slide that on top. But um, I would I would if you've got the axe head, I'd certainly start just by gluing it on and super, super gluing and hoping. Yeah. I'll super glue it on, and when it was when it was then on, I would then kind of cover the join in super glue. Yes, yeah, so you get that extra sort of bond. That's what I'd do, personally. You? I, I've just left them off. I think I've lost all my axe heads. <laughs> Use them fast, and then you can stun people. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fantastic idea. But yeah, it is annoying. Um, you, your tiny little metal joints go, but um, that's the best we can do, but uh, good luck with it. Replacements, I'd say the plastic dwarf warriors heads. You want you want an axe head that's light. Yeah. That's why that's why the plastic ones are good and they're a bit cheaper. But um, yeah, it's obviously hard because then you you basically end up with a bunch of dwarf warriors without axe heads. Yeah, you're just swapping the models that aren't that are broken. But yeah, maybe message um, David Whitaker because I know he's been doing it a bit, so he might have um, some tips. Yeah. Cool. Next up, we've got 19 Mark F91 who I have still not replied from text to, so apologies. I feel bad. That's your, that's your mate, right? Sorry? That's your mate, isn't it? Uh, yes, uh, we used to, well, Mark and I used to play at the uh, Sheffield store and I believe it's the Wakefield store. Okay. Um, when I was at Union, in, uh, I should say nothing, in Sheffield. Uh, a little behind the scenes here. You're recording this, right? Yeah. <laughs> We hadn't chatted about that at the start. I just had this horrible feeling that you... Oh, you yeah, yeah, no, no, it's recording. He says it's recording. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> uh, he says, Hey, guys, both of the Dwarf, both Thorin's Company and Champions of Erebor, has a special rule steadfast. On a 2+, plus, he can ignore a magical power or special ability. Just wondered what you interpret a special ability to be. Is it similar to Flowey's Lawmaster, where it's a special rule? It was, or if it was simply to stop magical powers, I don't see why they would add special ability to the sentence. Thanks and happy strategy battle gaming. You look shocked and confused. <laughs> Deafening silence. <laughs> um, the way I have always seen it is, yeah. like sort of special rules. The, when I've played against him or used him against a shade, on a two plus, he ignores that aura. So yeah. He just doesn't have to deal with it. Uh, Special ability. Uh, it's things that are affecting him. Maybe Rumil, if he was fighting Rumil. He would ignore the swift parry on a 2+. plus. Yeah, something like that. I think it's probably there to... I think it's a it's a anti-rules lawyering thing, if I'm honest. I think it's there because there's going to be things that people can... It, it, it's like a catch-all. So someone targets him or something, and they go, oh, I'm using it. Well, that's not a magical ability. I think they yeah, put it into that. Um, you could have... This, this is right up Larry Street, isn't it? That if Floyd... Try to negate his rule. Could he then go two plus and ignore that? But then he's a, yeah, and, it goes around and the world blows up. Yeah, 
But um, I, yeah, it's, I don't think it's particularly nefarious or anything to look at. It's just some people will have a some sort of maybe I don't know, maybe like Aristotle's throwing daggers. I don't know. Yeah, where we can re-roll a wound against them. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's just bound to be something like that in the game. Rescue shooting at him. The second shot. Does he get the second shot? Yeah. Oh God. Oh, Legolas yeah. auto hits him. Two plus ignore. It's kind of wrong. <laughs> Can't, no, you can't ignore that, surely. That's a... No, because that's an ability. I think, I think it's if something's directly affecting him. Yeah. Because like, it's like... targeted as well, doesn't it? It says that if he's targeted by a special ability. Yeah. Okay, um, so, so maybe you wouldn't ignore the shade on a 2 plus then. No. Maybe, maybe like Legolas' is deadly shot. I think he's like. Just jumps out of the way. Auto hit him thing, doesn't it? But... Let's hope it never comes up. We don't know. Yeah. I, doubt, I doubt he's that often the use. He's. Not that high up on the dwarf list. However, it's a good question, and maybe it might be community FAQ'd in the future when no, he no. charges into two king's champions and he wants to use multiple fate, and you know he wants to stop that from happening. Yeah. Cool. Uh, next up, we have Ross Diggle. He says, "I also think that Tolkien would not enjoy the films." Uh, he went on record saying he never wanted them to be made into films. Plus, his story had been changed far too much. Now, as a positive outlook on things. Uh, my question for the <laughs> can you still use a two-handed weapon whilst mounted, such as a wizard or a hunter or a mark? Well, Ross Diggle, a wizard is not a two-handed weapon, unfortunately. So you still <laughs> you can't be whilst mounted. No, unfortunately not. Uh, you can, however, use a two-handed weapon while mounted. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a two-handed axe you can use. So yeah, a wizard, a mounted wizard can use his staff um, to smack people on the head if he wants. Yeah. Uh, in the new one, you couldn't in the blue rule book, could you? It changed. No, 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 it, that changed. Yeah. But yes, you can. Simplified it a bit. Boom. Sorted it. Yeah. Done. Uh, next up, we have David Whitaker. He says, "I could have sworn I did a question, but it turns out I've been out the loop. Still watching though. Nice to hear my Iron God and Kazakh God get a mention last week and again this week. Oh, yeah, that, I thought you, I thought you just read out of mine somehow." <laughs> Uh, just pop an axe head on a Grimhammer's weapon, paint it gold, and you have a pretty solid Kazard. Question this week, what do you think of this 800 point list? Two troll chieftains, one troll drum, four Mordor trolls. The drum just fills up the 20 points, and evil can't take Alfred. <laughs> Plus fast trolls can spend the turn getting into position better. <laughs> it's a bit low on my... Is, is the troll drum still a banner? Or is it just movement now? It's not a banner, it's just a movement. Oh, that's a shame. Someone likes to use them against you to like move down the side and effectively, you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think now that might do all right. Yeah. Because you've got uh, seven trolls, and Mordor trolls are what, their defence seven? So seven base, eight for the chieftains. So you're going to have seven, eventually, they might, whatever you're fighting, they might bring down one or two with shooting. But then you're going to have about five... Five six mon models five seven. five seven hitting their lines and starting hurling. Ooh. I think it could be. How many points is that? Eight hundred. I I hundred. Uh, it's way. It's it's you. You enter the realm of wizards. Yeah. But and the, the wizard, the wizard, you 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 just take one down a turn with the wizard. See, he's he shouldn't be reached by the trolls. I thought. Um, I played Kieran Street. Uh, in the final of a tournament, actually. I mean, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. 750 points, and he had Burda and three Cave Trolls, all of which are worse than this. So Cave Trolls worse than Mordor yeah. Trolls, Burda worse than the Chieftain. Um, and it was horrible. It was, And thank God I had crossbows because I was able to kill the, some of the Cave Trolls. But the idea of four of them hitting my line was terrifying. Yeah. And I, I think I think you could do a lot of damage with it. Yeah, I guess so, because you... I was sort of fortunate in the you you don't have a battle line you just sort of swarm. Yeah. Whereas if you were fighting a structured battle line with it, that hurl could ruin. The first hurl can ruin the battle line, and then everything else is just. If you've got priority and you get to pick them, like you know, you, you do the old bowling thing. One goes one way down the line, the other one goes the other way down the line, and then the others can barge and charge more and just kill the guys <laughs> on the floor. Yeah. It was chaos. I mean, it depends what you find. If you come up against what their defense seven, so even strength, even my, like Faraka stuff are only strength four. They still need sixes. Yeah, I think it could be it could be alright. Hmm. 
you, you'll suffer in the end from might. 800 points, only having six might. Isn't it's great. Four might there. Oh, they only two, are they? Two on one, yeah. Um, but... I guess the army doesn't rely on it, though, at all. No. Uh, because they can't, you you just can't, you're here, what your army's going to have maybe, your opposing armies might have about four heroes to kind of strike against you. Yeah, that's the... Got seven trolls, so... Hmm. I think I would be worried if I played it. Yeah, if, if, if someone put that down and I didn't have Double Dragon, I'd be very scared. <laughs> Double Dragon, Double, Dragon, Double Dragon loves that one. However, however much you theorise about bringing it down, as soon as you lose a couple of those combats and he starts yeah. hurling, you're in a whole world of pain. Yeah. So yeah, could be fun though. 800 points, does that, does that mean he's bringing that to a tournament set? Um, There's not an 800 coming up, is it? Uh, What's Ed's? How big is Ed's? Cause I'm not going to start. I don't know, I've never seen it. Well, the pack? Yeah, sure. Huh? No, yeah, no, never mind. Wait, if you rewatch this back, you'll, you'll, you'll. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, I see. I get. Yeah. Um, so. uh, I think, I think it's a seven hundred or seven fifty. Yeah, because then it's like Preston's six hundred and Stockport. Uh, uh, Sterling is it? Well, Sterling's to, well, uh, Stockport's to be confirmed yet. Yeah. There's uh, another five hundred one. What's the five hundred one? Um, oh, five hundred one. Yeah, there's a five hundred after. It goes Preston, which is 600, then Ed, and the next, there's a 500 point one in there, because I've been thinking about it. 500? I'm all over that. Yeah, no, there is. Um, oh, what is I it? I love 500 points. I win 500 point tournaments. Yeah, you do. There's just not been one for nearly <laughs> two years. Um, I swear. I think you're lying. I think I'd know. I think I'd know. No, nah, there is, because um, I, I remember looking at... Great, G -G great British Hobbit League events. Yeah. Uh, Smaugfest? No. No. Uh, Red Steel, Hobbit Crisis in Longbottom in September is... Uh, hmm. That's 700, isn't it? The Longbottom one. Oh, no, that's it, that's it. It's the Slayer one. It's Slayer? The, uh, yeah. Oh, it's baby, I Slayer. am going to win that one. <laughs> Calling it now. That's um yeah that's it. So that's a five hundred point tournament, which is not what he's talking about. Um, <laughs> so on to yeah. But uh yeah, so I, it must be just theorising, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, do it. Smash people up. It'll be fun. I think it'll be a lot of fun to use. Yeah. Do you want to take the next one? Uh, yeah, uh, it's Jeremy Smith. He says, "Can Meriadoc, captain of the Shire, benefit from gambling's royal standard of Rohan?" Yes. Do you want to take the next one? Captain of the Shire. He's from the Shire list. Oh, is that not... Mary, oh. Mary Duck, Knight of the Mark is from the oh. Rohan list. Oh, sorry, then no. no. That's, that's, that's the correct answer. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I think you meant because he was a hobbit. No, uh, Mary Duck, Captain of the Shire is not a Rohan hero, so can't benefit from... Yeah, it's the one in the list, isn't it? Yeah, Knight, Knight of the Mark. Yeah, he gets to do it. The other one yeah. And Fellowship doesn't either. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just the ones inside the... Um, Obvious. Yeah, the independent character one. Yeah. Next yeah. up, we've got Billy Fitzmorris. He says, 25 minutes speak for in question. James is usually telling us what he had for his lunch by that point. Yeah. Well, it's it's yeah. true as well. That's true, yeah. On the money, yeah. yeah. Billy, I, um, if you're watching this, I greatly enjoyed your speak for in question the other week. Let's see more of that happen. So well done, sir. Yeah, well, I, I've spoken to the guys in Nottingham and if this uh, full time stuff does eventually happen we will yeah. definitely be going over to Nottingham more often to get sort of a few days content recorded with those guys oh yeah sounds good he comes across well Jay did very well as well I just realised Jay's now sitting at home crying he's got his own YouTube channel he's got his Jay. own fans uh, uh, the informer Guild Ball informer uh -huh. yeah. or insider as everyone likes to get it wrong but yeah um, yes uh we, we haven't talked about lunch. Do you want to talk about what you had for lunch? What did I have for lunch today? I had a really boring lunch today. I had ravioli and toast. Ravioli and toast? Yeah. It. I, I've started doing a thing for work where because I go to work at 8am and I get my lunch at 12, I don't really want a big meal. So I tend to take some sort of like um, like beans and sausage or ravioli. Something that will keep me going until I get home at 5 and have a big tea. 
ravioli and toast. That's yeah. Fine dining cuisine. Yeah, it was. That's less less uh... I, uh, I made myself an Emirate omelette. Oh, yeah. Uh, a bit of red and green pepper in there, some bacon, mm. some onion. It's pretty good. That's, uh, <laughs> it's no ravioli, though, is it? No, no. T- no t- tinned but... ravioli as well. Oh, it's, it's the only way to live. 39p, Aldi. Boom. Just gets better. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so appetizing. The bread was uh, Asda's Whoops 10p bread. Whoops? Whoops. Is that like Whoops I bought it? No, it's uh, whoops, this is going out of date and we need to sell it. <laughs> down from... MP bread. Down from 90 to 10 p. Really. <laughs> Lunch of kings. <laughs> Lunch of, I've not been paid yet. <laughs> oh, brilliant. There you go. There's some um, tedious and unnecessary and boring content to hopefully... Um, Fill up this video. Yeah, get you by. Oh my god, this has been like oh, 45 minutes, but we haven't been recording for the entire time. No. Uh, I read that out. It's your turn. Okay, uh, this is uh, D- uh, D- <coughs> Samuel Taylor. Hey, Coppernol. Uh, he says, "My question this week is, what is your favourite scene from the Lord of the Rings?" Whoa, whoa, whoa! We've, we've missed one out here, man. Ah, uh, no, sorry, Samuel Taylor. My bad. Oof. Oh, sorry. You just Oof. just wait, Mister Coppernol. Uh, Samuel Taylor says, "Hey guys, this week I'd really like to build out my Gondor force to become more competitive. I decided it's the one I want to bring to the Nova tournament." Ah, oh, so Warriors of Minas Tirith, Denethor. Uh, <laughs> a fountain court without shields. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Good. Good call. Front line of rangers. Yeah. Um. I'll, I'll lay in some hobbits without bows. Yeah. Or some. Oh, no, they throw stones. Um, no, to Rohan. Yeah. With throwing spears or shields. All your heroes should be unnamed captains of Minas Tirith. Yep. Yep. Agree. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. even. Yeah, no, no captains with no gear. Lances on foot. <laughs> they take Minister of Knights and dismount them in turn one. Yeah. Pro it's, skills. It's key, key skill. Uh, but serious. <laughs> a couple of questions with that. Yeah, uh, a couple of questions with that. Uh, do Knights of Minister have a place in a competitive Minister of Sport, a force? And I was wondering about putting Citadel Guard on horse with a spear to. <laughs> <laughs> you scumbag. Do Citadel Guard on horse have a place in a competitive force? Thanks, guys. Yeah. Uh, one? So one, do Knights of Minas Tirith have a place in a competitive Minas Tirith force? And I think the odd one or two can probably get in there. Yeah, I, I think so. I think the Lancers are huge. Yeah, the, the Lancers is their big selling point, isn't it? came up against something like a dwarf list. Yeah. Where you're going to need sixes to wound. Having a charging guy who suddenly needs five swords is incredibly five, helpful. Five on four dice is just. Yeah, it's, it, it, should be, it should be a dead dwarf. They're not good enough to. Whenever I've played against them, they, they, get in, they have the cav- classic cavalry thing where they kind of get in each other's way. The yeah. base dice doesn't allow you to hit an army line, and then they can't really deal with much. But yeah, I reckon a couple behind your line. Who then sweep around and take off a support or two. Don't send them forward to begin with. Wait till the lines clash, where they've hopefully been protected by a couple of in the ways. Don't do a Faramir. You what? I said don't do a Faramir. Don't do a Faramir, no. <laughs> Charge straight at the bow line. Don't do that. It won't work. No. Even the bow line. Um, and then as soon as the battle lines clash, kind of send them around the sides and use the lances to pick people off. So yeah, I think I think a few knights. Uh, Nova, 700, maybe maybe about four or something. Yeah, I think that, that would be a decent amount. Would be useful. It wouldn't be overloading your points into them. So if they do go down quickly, fair enough, it's not too much lost. But they've got the punch that can do it across the line as well. Yeah. And then point two is, do mounted Citadel Guard have a place in a competitive list? And he's also talking about um, using the spear to support the knights. Now, the spear thing feels very wrong. However, when you look at the spear rule, I think it... Uh, actually, no way. I think it might be a spearman on foot. If you are you are you looking through the rules now? Um, no. Yeah. Why, why aren't you? I think they can. I think you can. can support. I, I think that's the whole point. That they they removed all the. I don't think you have to be on foot. Or there's definitely not the thing about base sizes. The, the base size thing's gone. However, I have this little sort of cog turning in my head, which is probably complete nonsense. But I think it has to be like a spearman on foot may support any model in base contact. But as for Citadel Guard on horses. Uh, I think they, there is a place for them. 
And I know uh, Tim Hickson, who is an American player, or used to be, I, I've not seen him around for a while, he used to take about 16 mounted on horse with with the longbow, so the strength three. Obviously, that's before the move and shoot penalties came into play. But I think there's definitely something there to be said. Yeah, I, I can't say anything about him being on foot. Oh, okay, maybe it's just me thinking of the old rules again. But, um, I, I think your main, your main issue would be that it, it's a waste of the model. Why don't you just use a um, Minas Tirith guy with spear to do it? Off, a, fight, a, a ranger with spear. Yeah, a ranger. yeah exactly. Like this, yeah, I'll get you the same um, fight. Yeah, you. It's one of those things that sounds quite clever. It's like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a little loophole. But it's like, I, don't, I don't think it gets that much. You'll be better off having him as the mounted guy yeah. doing what we just talked about, looping round. Yeah, I yeah. think then being supported by one of the warriors yeah, who's there. Also then you're wasting whatever that's going to be a mounted citadel. What's like, that, like 9, 15, 16 points? So you've got like two or four of them just waiting for your cavalry to charge to support with... It's a waste of the cavalry model. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, just a couple of... Um, e- either either the or the citadel four actually want to do the conversions and then use the rangers to support them. Yeah. Our next so, up... We have got Dida Coppernol this time. He says, my question this week is, what's your favourite scene from the Lord of the Rings movies? By the way, Tolkien would not like the movies. Way too violent. And Dave, you have something familiar with Sam Gamgee. I don't know what that reference is to. Um, I've forgotten. <laughs> the weeks blur, merge into one. And the fight between Gandalf and the Witch King never happens in the books. Saruman gets his staff broken by Gandalf. Gandalf loses his first after the Balrog and gets a new one which never breaks. Read the books, lads. Well, I am reading the books. I'm just lazy. And... I have read the books. I know that. True story. Is it? Is it? I hate that bit. I hate that bit. I hate it. I hate it in the film. What? It's so which, which, which king is slapping the staff? Which king slaps his staff? Because it, it does nothing. It just basically turns Gandalf into a bit of a, I don't know, pick your word. Like, it, what? why? He just comes up to him and... If he came up to him and kind of scared him a bit and then rode off, right, why does he have to snap his stick? I so, so that we can have it in-game? So he's different to a ring wraith? Do you think that's what... <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think that was the intention. I hope like, that I, when, I think I hope when, Workshop got in touch with uh, like yeah. DJ and was like, we need to make the Witch King a bit different in-game. Can you add a scene into the extended edition where he, you know, like, I don't know, breaks a staff or something? When they were writing the scripts in 1999, and they were saying, oh, yeah, well, I presumably this will be a massive hit and get turned into a tabletop. One <laughs> <laughs> different focus. Yeah, yeah I, it just annoys me, because it, it's so... it's so. I don't mind the changes, but it's so different from the books, and it doesn't seem to do anything. I don't really yeah, see yeah. cheese by breaking his star. But, um, yeah, anyway. But, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, your favourite scene from the movie? Oh, favourite scene from the movies. Um, oh, it's Amon Hen. I was going to say that. I'm on hand. Boromir's death scene. It makes me a little bit sad every time, but you get to see Boromir in sort of with Sean Bean doing what he does. Yeah. I I was going to go for him on hand because I think it's so cool and, again, liking the game. I've said this before, but just I, the game can replicate that perfectly with yeah. the right numbers. You, you know, when you, when you have about 20 Eurocs, it looks like you've got about the right number. Yeah. And it is such a cool when it's just your heroes fighting orcs. There's no like extras fighting and stuff, and so every everyone who dies is feels like important. Yeah. And I love that. But for the sake of being different to you, I'll say Helm's Deep. Yeah, so Helm's Deep's the other one, isn't it? It's the big. It is the big cinematic battle, like the Battle of Pelennor. In the in its cinematography wise, has not. It doesn't even touch on Helm's Deep. Helm's Deep's such a well planned out battle I think I think the Pandafields had the problem that at the end of the two towers you have an awesome siege and then you have to have another awesome siege and yeah. so I, I really like the Charges of the I think that bit's so more like the Battle of the Pandafields rather than the Siege of Gondor that bit's cool yeah yeah, but yeah the bit, if I had to put anything on it's, it's always Fellowship and it'd always be um, yeah I really really like it's, it's not in Lord of the Rings but I, like, I love all the bag end stuff in The Hobbit like all the you know, the meeting and the songs and all that. Oh, yes, yeah, the very beginning of Unexpected Journey. Unexpected, the start of Unexpected Journey, I thought was fantastic. Yeah. I think the start of Unexpected Journey is a lot stronger than the start of The Fellowship. Yeah, maybe. I think, well, from re-watching anyway, I can, I can re-watch The Hobbit quite a few times and not feel it's... Well, it's because it's newer and it's not old. 
But yeah, that first 45 minutes in Bag End, I think, is brilliant. Yeah. Really, really good. But yeah. Hmm. So, next up, we have Mr. Ayana. Yes. Ayana. Ayana. Uh, who says, Hi, guys. What do you think of the following Harad army list? I only used it once and won with it, but that was against a more fluff army. I'm afraid I don't have enough elite troops in it because I used none since I prefer to hoard it out. And he has four warbands of six Harad warriors with bows and six with spear. A betrayer on armoured horse, a Sharin, a golden king of Abrakan, and a Haradrim king with bow. Uh, for a total of 52 models for a 751 army. It's a lot of shooting. 6, 12, 24. Yeah. It's... It, it... Your shooting has to work. He's got the betrayer, so that's the that's the real one. One and two. twos, yeah. You can see what you're doing there, but yes, yeah, so you got 24 bows, uh, strength two. I, if, if I'm being utterly honest, I wouldn't be overly worried about playing it. That's 750 points. See, you wouldn't be worried about playing it. I would be dreading it if I didn't have Gladriel. If you didn't have blinding light. If, that, if, if I was playing that, that would scare the life out of me. With wood elves. With wood elves, yeah. That's important. Yeah. You can get to defence five, which my normal armies are. Oh. I, I, I think a big, a big part of it is having the betrayer on armed horse. I, I, if you if you would drop a few guys, like get 40 points and put him on a fell beast. Yeah, definitely. Got, you've got that added... That added range and yeah. the big monster. Yeah. I mean, he's essentially a flying spider queen, betrayer mm. on, on fell beast. With Bane of Kings. I, I think it's all relative, that just the, seeing that, because there's so much filth in the Harad list from Watchers of Karnas and African Guard and stuff, that seeing that and just seeing it's just Harad Warriors, you know how much worse it could be. Yeah. Because um, they're, they're going to be fight three and. Fight three, defense four, yeah. You're going to get into combat with them, they're going to start falling like anything. Yeah. Um, I think the, um, the one thing I might suggest just for the Warband, I mean, just personally, would be to. Have the dedicated warbands. Normally, I don't. I'm not. I don't sort of recommend it. Mm -hmm. But I think if you had sort of you know your twelve bows in one warband, I guess it makes no difference when you set up really actually. But mm -hmm. I just think it's that way they can all come on with the betrayer and they can all benefit from it. Yeah. But I guess having the spears means you can form a line anywhere. You've got some horrible, horrible support heroes. If you've got enough models to hide the betrayer behind them, and you've got the golden king back there. That's that's horrendous. The Golden King is potentially game changing. Oh yes. Yeah. That that one turn where you just he minus a six to your courage value. You, you hit your general's gone. Yeah. If you're broken. Yeah. That can be horrible. Yeah. But, yeah it, it's all right, and it's also congratulations to you as well for well done for Re uh, resisting the filth. Like it would be, it's an, it's a pleasant list. It might, it might well do well. You might be right with it because you got some nice tricks, but no one could accuse you of utterly building it up. Yeah. So maybe use it in another couple of games and um, let us know how you get on. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Should we move on to the next one? Yep. Is Hajman? He says, "Hey guys, first question comment in a few weeks. Giblin, Muir me rolls to wound against all orcs, goblins, and Urukais, not just on ones." It's decent. Yeah, Giblin. Yeah, me. Giblin. Idiot. Also, you forgot to mention how incredibly cute his tiny shield is. <laughs> which I've just pulled up onto um, Google and it, it is teeny tiny. Yeah. It that, that is cute. That's a buckler right there. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's a buckler, isn't it? Yeah. He, he, they are travelling dwarfs, so they wouldn't carry a big shield round. Um, question. Have you gents ever mucked around on the RPG War in the North? It's quite glitchy, but full of inspiration. Oh. I've completed it. I didn't think too much opposite of it. Of the spectrum, isn't it. Sorry? That's the opposite ends of the spectrum. Yep, nope, I've completed it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's it's alright. It's it's not Lord of the Rings. It uses the... It is Lord of the Rings, Damien, sorry. I can see you worried there. Mine again. <laughs> uh, it, it is Lord of the Rings. However, it's not the Lord of the Rings that we know. Uh, you know, you, you have elves that are casting big shields of defense around you, so arrows can't hurt you. It's it's a bit more. It's a bit too high fantasy to be Lord of the Rings. Right. It's a bit more like Warhammer than no, not Ninth Edition Warhammer. Okay, but, what Warhammer's like? Well, Warhammer's like Space Hulk. Yeah. 
Yeah, who hung with Spiceman? Yeah. Yeah, comment below if you've seen those pictures. Not a fan. Not a fan. Okay. Uh, this is it. I think this is a good anecdote. You, you text me yesterday saying, have you seen the new... <laughs> yeah, so it made me laugh. ...pictures. And, and so I'm like, it looks horrible. And I replied with a very mature sort of... It doesn't really bother me anymore. I haven't played it in years, you know, it's... It is what it is. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't really affect me. And then I saw them. I was like, "Oh my god, I take it back. It looks horrible." <laughs> it was like for me. I've not played fantasy in a good sort of two or three years, but I remember playing it and I remember loving the setting. And as soon as I saw those space marines or sigma rights, it's just. You could, oh. you could say that was a forty k space um, space marine, arc, and you, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have blinked. You'd be like, "Oh yeah, yes, it is." Yeah, it looked. Oh, no. Oh, you... Men in their clothes fighting against the odds. Yeah. Oh. And their cloth clothes, not their big, heavy, curved armour. So... Oh, dear. Uh, it doesn't really affect me. I'm not going to get into it. Do you want to take the next question? Yep. Uh, um, so next up we have William Far Clarsen, who says, Hello, Jamie and guest. Hi. Guest. Uh, I am guest. Uh, let's say you are playing. <laughs> let's say, all right, we're going. We're going into a role player. Okay. Let's say you're playing Goblin Town yeah. and your Goblin King has been completely surrounded, but you use Grinner's special heroic to get him out of there. Okay. Given their different base sizes, this may cause some problems. Yeah. If the Goblin King was completely swamped, for example, then Grinner can't possibly go into base contact with the same amount of enemy models. And what about if Grinner was surrounded and swapped with the King? Do all models get pushed aside? What if there are combats in the way? How are these things resolved? Cheers, and the best of luck to turn the hobby into a job. Oh, I think the same thing. That's <laughs> me, yeah. Um, going through the first questions. Yeah. So first one is, if the Goblin King was completely swamped and Grinner swapped into him... Oh, no, wait, I've, I've, I've missed the question. Oh, yeah, it's, 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 are those models still in combat? Now, I had something similar happen at Games Workshop. A throne of Schools a while back, and I've used this in all all following rulings because it's what I got ruled with. I think what it was was uh, a model on horse had been surrounded, Legolas had auto shot and he'd fallen down on the ground. I was like, he's not in base contact with any of them, so the guy I was playing against was like, so he's not fighting them. And I was like, that doesn't feel right because I've charged him, and yeah. now through circumstances he's not in combat. So I think we called Simon Grant over and we just explained the situation, and Simon was like. They count as being in combat for this turn. Next turn, they all move back as if he if he survives. They all move back with like one inch, and from then you play, you play on from then. Yeah. So I would say. So they all counted as being in contact. Yes, yeah. For that one turn. I think that's that's sensible because that, I was actually going to say that's that's the other example of it, isn't it? If a horse yeah. goes down because of a panic steed or a nature's wrath, that could happen in a number of situations. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think Grinner takes the he takes the hit on that. He like. If he, you decide to swap him in, you know what you're getting yourself into. So, you say, yeah. You're saving your Goblin King at the expense of the little man. So I think that's a fair enough swap. And I believe, just speaking to Billy, the reverse of that is that if you want to swap Grinner with the Goblin King, but the Goblin King's base can't fit, then he can't swap with me. Yeah, I'd agree with that as well. Like, there needs to be room to do it. You can't yeah, just... I mean... You can only put any model, like, forget about his rule, just the basic game rules, you can only put a model where it can fit. Yeah. So if he can't fit there, particularly because of, as you say, in, um, as the as Williams says, it could affect other combats. Yeah, if they're all getting moved around. Yeah. So, so I, I don't think you'd be able to. Because he, um, someone like Bayorn has it, Bayorn and the Watcher specifically say in their rules that they can displace models and push them yeah. aside. And it's, it's, it's usually in the path of least resistance as well, isn't it? Whereas, well, something along that, at least. Right. They also, do they all, they all does it, in, I suppose they could affect combats depending on who you have priority. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, think, I think this is just, um, both of those are quite logical and sensible answers. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So hopefully that answers your question, William. Cool. Next up we have Warlord. He says, my question is, what is more important to you? The Tolkien Law... Or the Games Workshop game. Hmm. Let's say when the Lord of the Rings Hobbit license expires and another company picks it up, if they do, but with other models, but with other models and rules, would you play that game system? Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah. Um, 
I would. I, I was into the law first. I, I was into the, the game and the not the game, the, <laughs> the books and the films before the game. But I think in in this sense of war gaming, the game's more important to me. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, the reason I play the game isn't because it's, there's lots of Lord of the Rings games out there. The reason I play it isn't because of that. It's because I think it's a really good rule system. So uh, if another game picked up, if another pe- other people picked up the system, I don't think I'd be in any rush to go and buy all their models and all and invest in that. Yeah. Because yeah. I think I want to. I've got this collection. And yeah, I would agree there. So yeah, I think I'd, I'd be interested in it, but I'd probably rather play rather paint up my huge backlog and play with the existing player base yeah. of a dead game than try and get into some, uh, an entirely new aesthetic and an entirely new rule set of a new game. Probably. Yeah, I, I would agree with that one. I, I, I got into the... Well, I got into Lord of the Rings for the films and then the game and then read the books. So for me, the, the Games Workshop game replicates the films really well and that's what I've enjoyed about playing it. And then obviously... As the sort of the skill level increased, I enjoyed the game more and more and more, and looked more at their sort of the profiles and things available in the system. So if another company picked it up, I've, I've devoted so much time and effort into this system, I'd be reluctant to play that game system. Another thing for me is that a, lo- a large part of my enjoyment of this game now is the um, the social side of it and the community and the fact yeah, that we have these tournaments with these people. So I like going away to Mansfield, staying in the 281, knowing that I'm going to see about 20, 30 people that I know and like spending their company with. And so that's a major part of why I play the game now, yeah. um, rather than so and that obviously wouldn't be there with a brand new system. But, you know, who knows, relatively, this game's been going for 15 years. It's not that, you know, most of us have got another 60 years left on the planet. So it's not that, it's not that, that much in the grand scheme of things. So who knows... What if anything will be playing in about thirty years' time? Oh, it's really weird. It's really, really weird. Uh, you next. It is, and it is Resco Nesco. I haven't heard that name before. No, I've not. Um, he says, "I hi, I finally took the leap, and I'm getting back into the game. Well done, sir. Oh, I got good. some Dark Age warriors. I'm going to convert into ruffians as I'm doing scouring the Shire army. Good man. I really like the theme. Just want to say thanks for keeping this channel going." Not a problem. Uh, for questions, should I put all of my archers in one warband or split them half and half between two? And should I give the leader of warband with archers a bow? Yeah, I'd say split them. I'd say keep them in one. You take what, sorry? I'd say keep them in one. Keep them all in one? Yep. Mm. Why do you say that? I, be, I do this with my um, I'm my eyes and god armies. And I've got, um, so about a third crossbowmen and the rest are ferals and berserkers. And the reason I try and that, that generally a third will be one warband. It'll be with t- 10 or 11, not more than that. And the reason I put them all in one is because when you're rolling for deployment, I probably want to try and outshoot my opponent. So what I do is I put them in one and I roll for that warband first to see if they start within 12 inches of the center. Because ah, okay. if I, as long as I get a four plus then it doesn't matter if my other models start in 12 in the centre because they can then run back. Whereas yeah, yeah. if my crossbowmen start in 12 in the centre, I am then I now know I need to play a different game and form up my line around that. Right, yeah, I get you. And as soon as you've got them split between two, you've then got two warbands that you've got to get in the right place. The crossbowmen are your only warband for me that are really important where they come on. So having them all in one, you know, yeah, get yeah. in one. And it's, it's all or nothing. Yeah. It, well, exactly. Yeah. That's that's the downside of it. Obviously, that if you know, if I had half and half, maybe half would end up in the right place. But I like knowing in one role. Yeah. And then build my plan around that. That's good. That's good. <laughs> See, for me, it's not so much about those scenarios because the Wood Elf strategy is retreat, shoot. So, regardless, I'll be setting up on that back twelve inch line and retreating probably. Yeah. For me, where it makes a difference is on sort of like is it uh, it's taken hold. With the maelstrom of battle, the whole ground. Oh. Sorry, yeah, um, where they can come on all at random places, and that way I'll always have shots. Yeah. So a bow is not being wasted because it's rolled a one or sorry, it's rolled a two and set up in the yeah. corner on its own. So again, it also matters um, when you're you're obviously talking about archers for ruffians. So yours yeah. have more what Jamie said, but mine makes a difference because it's crossbows because I can't move and shoot. 
Yeah. So you, if you roll that one to three, you can back away and shoot, whereas I can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, amazing. You, you want to set up within 24 inches, regardless of how far they move. Yeah, for those with ruffians, you're, more, you're better off splitting them, like uh, Mr. Gidlin says. Hmm. And should I give the leader of their war band a bow? I say if you have the points, sure. Cause he's probably going to stick around with them. For you, it's an easy choice because you've got Vrasku. And for me, I've got Legolas, so again, easy easy choice. But so who's leading them? Um, who would be leading them? A Wildman of Dunland? Probably Maybe not. Dunland in Chieftain, I suppose. Yeah, sorry, Dunland in Chieftain, not Wildman of Dunland. Well, I'm just looking at the options for what you'd have for a bow. It must be. Shield. Like... Shield, two ended X, and bow. He has the shield, making self defence six. The shield's better, definitely. So I get him a shield first. And then if you've got five points spare and... But then if, if you take in the shield and you take the bow, he's going to drop the defence anyway, so... Yeah, this is true. I suppose it's another shot, but then that's another... You can get another ruffian with a bow. Yeah. No, do that. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'd, if I had five points left in that list, I'd get another ruffian with a bow, because that gets you the extra shot with the same shoot value, and it also increases numbers. Yeah. I would do that. No bow. No bow. Shield. No. Shield, defence. Defence yeah. or horse, if you've got yeah. the options. And that leads us to the last question, yeah. which is yours. Yes, it is, isn't it? Uh, J22. Is this... That's the guy that... Um, Jay Acharya, who... Um, yeah, Jay Acharya. I, I, th I thought it was... I didn't want to say the second name and get it wrong. I, I still don't know. I think it's Acharya. A, chari a chariot. J a chariot. He is one chariot, yeah. He is one chariot, yeah. One complete chariot. He says, hey, Jamie, and guest. Hope I'm not too late asking a question, which he obviously isn't, uh, but a quick one this week. What is your opinion, uh, what, in your opinion, is the filthiest faction available in the game if you don't take points limits into account? I would say either Moria or Mordor, and don't you think the Lord of the Rings factions are stronger than the ones from The Hobbit? Thanks for all the great content. And you've actually answered this thing. I realised. What are you doing? I know, right? Yeah. I, I, I didn't know I was going to be on this, so I, I answered with the only answer that screamed to mind. With no points limits into account? Yeah, this this is the list, isn't it? Do you want to I, answer? I said, as a comment, filthy, filthy harad. I, I think in... I don't really know what he means by no points limit into account. I presume that means like across all points values. Yeah. yeah. Like 300, 500, 500. I think Harad is the, if you have one faction, it's the one that you can filth up the most. Irregardless of points value. Yeah. Like it can be filthy at low points, it can be filthy at high points. You can't get the, 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 the common utter filth with Harad is to put the Shadow Lord on. And you yeah, can't yeah. do that if you're doing one list, but you've still got, you've got access to, it's the Betrayer and the Knight of Umbar on Fell Beast if you want. Yep. Then the African Guard, the um, Watchers of Kana and Reed. Which, uh, and the Golden King. It, I think it's the it's the list that can be abused the most personally. Definitely, yeah. You, do you think? Yes, I, I would agree entirely. There, Haradrim are the potentially the most broken list. If there was a broken list, because Moria, if you just take them from Moria, they're not that bad. You no. can do Groblog and Double Shaman, but you don't get Fell Beasts and you don't get Shades. Yeah, and you're only monsters are sort of dragons, uh, Spider uh, Queen. Oh, a text. Yeah. Which is good, but it's not a fell beast. You can beat them, whereas as soon as you drop a shade in there, it's very it's tough. Rough. yeah. Um, yeah, like wood elves, like the old classic wood elves, but then they they have that wonderful thing where a filthy wood elf list is actually really themed as well. Yeah, it's competitive, but I don't think there is. I don't think there is because what what happens with them is to make a really filthy wood elf army, you take a load of the normal guys, just regular. Like, yeah, but, yeah. filthy Harad army, you spam elites, and it feels dirtier, I think. Yeah, it does. Knowing that someone's paid all those all the money as well for those models, it's like you've done this for one purpose, to win and the games. That, if I, I've played armies, I've set up against armies that were like 50% watchers, 50% fat guys, and I fell beast and just wanted to cry. Like, yeah. Oh, good lord. So, and then they get the cheap cheap Harad spearmen to support the watchers, so you have three yeah. And then Reavers as well. It's, no, it's a horrible list. Yeah. With an axe or a sword, so they can choose depending on their opponents. Uh, 
Then the second part of the question is, don't you think the Lord of the Rings factions are stronger than the ones from the Hobbit? I would agree with that statement, purely because they've had more time to be f well-rounded. Yeah, but... Maybe think, not on the whole, but they I think the evil ones are. Yeah, definitely. Oh, but without, a, without a shadow of a doubt, the evil ones are stronger. Yeah, the evil army is definitely stronger. The, 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 the new Hobbit evil is wonderfully fluffy. Yeah. It doesn't really break the game. But I think the new... The like, Lake Town spam is horrific. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, good point, yeah. Lake Town, Rivendell Knights. Yeah. The, Grim yeah, Force. Like, Rivendell Knights have become a competitive army. In the hands of the right players, like Rivendell Knights and a wizard. Yeah. Or Rivendell Knights on their own up to about four or five hundred. Yeah. And then Rivendell Knights and a wizard after that is a horrible list. Yeah. Alfred. Well, yeah, yeah. Alfred's a huge game changer for good armies. Yeah. And then, yeah, like Jay Clare, Jay Clare in particular, but also um, Steve and Jay. With have, the militia. Yeah, yeah they've done a very good the job. Bard. Oh. Yeah. That, I mean, that bard is a nightmare. Well, the first one. No, what? the second one. This is the 12-inch banner or something. Yeah, he is. And oh, it's a pain. Yeah. If you've got the militia army around them, it's horrible. Yeah. But then there's also great synergy there with the new White Council, because you, you get all these expensive heroes, but it doesn't affect your numbers because you just spam this dirt shoot Lake Towns. Yeah, it's true. So I, I, think that, I think there's some incredibly competitive new good armies. The other thing that's terribly prohibitive about them is the cost to, to, to pick them up initially. Yeah. To get to get the, that many militia or to get that many uh, Lake Town guardsmen. Yeah. Financially is not as likely to see it as the filthier Lord of the Rings factions. So yeah, I think I think it, it, basically if you were to make like a top ten list of the competitive factions, mm. then yeah, more from Lord of the Rings would be in it than the Hobbit. Definitely. But, but then equally, there are more from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, true. And they're not even all from Lord of the Rings. Like, the Harad list isn't really Lord of the Rings, is it? You know, the, I, know, I know the Harad warriors and the Mimic were in it, but that's not what's filth. If you if you went back to look at what the what the lists were when Lord of the Rings came out, you know, just Rohan warriors and Gondor warriors and no founding court, you know, that sort of stuff, they're not particularly filthy. Yeah. It's, the, it's all the GW stuff in, in between the two trilogies. That's that's where the filth is, and the post films as well. Yeah, so, that's what I'm... oh yeah, oh sorry, in between the two trilogies, right? right yeah, yeah, sorry. So like all all those kind of GW creations, like Ferals, Watchers, Fat Guys, Red Shields, Shields. yeah, Red Shields, Erkin <laughs> Brand becoming a decent hero. Yeah, like it, it generally speak, generally speaking, it's the stuff that isn't in the films that's really really powerful. Yeah, it's because they've got access to it and can do what they want with it. Yeah, that's right. More so than. So yeah, I think, and yeah, like you said, I think the the Lord of the Rings armies have been developed fully because the game was at its height, whereas the Hobbit armies have less troop types available. Hmm. So yeah, I think I think Lord of the Rings are, on average, competitive, more competitive. But I think some of the um, some of the new Hobbit good armies can be very very good indeed. Yeah, definitely. the new Saruman's horrendous. Oh, he's awful. I played him once, did not enjoy. <laughs> In, on the planet when it. it occurred to us on the planet that he's got Aura of Command. Did you know yeah, that? Yeah. Because yeah. I played against... Um, I played against uh, Jay when he used it. Uh, uh, yeah, Jay, Claire, and Dan Entwistle at the doubles. Because we had, obviously, you played it, our army with all the spectres. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, all right, Aura of Command, uh, everyone, they're going to channel it, because I've got Alfred. Uh, yeah, so all these guys are now going to pass courage tests, so they're going to charge you terrifiers regardless. Because I, I played Tom Seeking at the weekend. And he tried to put up terrifying aura, and I was like, he hasn't got it. Yeah. And he was, it was like, what? He, was like, he hasn't got it. He's got aura. Come on, because I, th I genuinely think a lot of people have overlooked that because his spells haven't changed for so long. You just assume he's got the but, same. That's a rule. So yeah, yeah. But no, that's the new sound for render. Yeah, it's that one dice in Sorcerer's Blast and being still very likely to get it off. And being able to reroll it. Well, that's why, yeah. Yeah, horrible. Twenty-five percent chance of failure. <laughs> Good, good Hobbit are very, very good indeed. Agreed. And that, as they say, is that. That's what they say? That's what they say. That's all the comments from this week. Which, I think, actually, we've done quite well this week. We've uh, Just over an hour, I think. Yeah, just over an hour. 
So, if we've answered your question or you're in the loop, please do comment next week. So we've got uh, plenty because I'm not sure who I'll be doing it with next week. In fact, is James back next week? No, I do. He's back in July, isn't he? I have a feeling he texts me maybe saying, we'll meet up not this Thursday, but next Thursday. James may be back for next week's edition of Speak Friendly Question. There you go. Uh, but in the meantime, guys, make sure you comment, like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and like us on Twitter. No, it's the other way around. Oh, every single time you have to do the second bit, you yeah. ruin it, Damien. Do you, do you want to start? Follow us, and, follow us and like us on two social networks of your choice. Yeah. Should I support your hobby, hobby like <laughs> I've forgotten. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not in the flow of it. That was strong. It was strong. This is uh, okay. Make sure you comment, like, share, and subscribe. I oh, get follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Support your hobbit hobby. I'm happy strategy battle game. Oh, we nailed it. Yeah, we nailed it. You gave the same bit again. Who does? I know, but I, I, I wanted to restart it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's that's enough there. We done. Yeah, we're done. Oh, and all right? Yeah, I think we're all good. Yeah. Edit that up tonight. Publish it.